Hello and welcome back to another Fish Fridays with me, Ben, the Amity Angler, where every Friday at 6pm I'll sit and discuss with you one of the many fish species we've got here in the UK. I'll talk rigs, records, baits and tactics, and I'll even throw in a few top tips as well. And this week we're going to talk about the mighty black bream. So let's get going. So pound for pound, one of the hardest fighting fish in the sea, the black bream, I think so, certainly here in the UK. Brilliant fun on light spinning gear. Located all along the south coast, down the west coast, all the way down through Dorset and Cornwall and out through Jersey and Guernsey as well. Each year some absolutely massive specimens still get thrown up now. So the chances of uh, seeing a big fish or big black bream, they're there for anybody who fishes for them because each year they continue to surprise me certainly and throw up some absolute monsters. Uh, males in the spring will have a really vibrant blue to the top of their head, so it actually look like the logo here on me, really, really vibrant blue, it's their mating colours, you can't miss a male black bream in the spring, and I'll put some pictures up here for you. The female, slightly smaller, and it tends to be just all one colour silver. On the top of them though, be aware, they are absolutely covered in spines, really thin hypodermic type needle stuff. Goes through your hands, instant reaction is to drop the fish. It is painful as anything. In the autumn, the males lose that blue when they're not mating now, but it does have a darker patch on their head. Still, it's still quite easy to tell once you've done it a few times and you can see a male from a female. But yeah, in the autumn, the males lose those colors. So here on the south coast around Brighton, Eastbourne Way, we tend to get two runs of black bream. Uh, the date currently is around mid-March at the minute, sort of 20, 25th of March, I'm not 100% sure. But within the next week, two weeks, we're going to start seeing black bream here, and it's going to be the first of two runs that we get. So we get a spring run where they're coming in to nest and breed. They normally come up from the west. You start getting whisperings about people seeing them at the Isle of Wight, uh, maybe beyond, but certainly it's what I listen out for. And then we've got a big famous reef down here, down off uh, Worthing Lansing Way, called Kingmere. Um, and it's a mecca for black bream. It will be absolutely swamped shortly. And that's where the bigger ones, they nest up. And what will happen is, is the males and females, they get their little nests and they burrow little divots, little holes in the sand. And then the female will sit in there with her eggs. Uh, and she'll have a male that will guard lots of different nests. Uh, and that's the springtime. And like I said, the males take on that blue. Interesting fact is one male will actually guard a dozen female nests. And I highlight that again later on in the top tip section uh, because that's actually quite important and quite something that people need to know. And it's not something that's quite readily known. So I'm pleased to be able to share this with you today. But yeah, so a male will guard sort of up, up to a dozen nests per one male fish. Uh, so they're quite important to the ecosystem. Um, so yeah, the spring run, they come in, they breed, they do that for a month or so, six weeks, um, and then they start dispersing, and then they'll start appearing all over the beaches all through summer. They'll be coming up to the shingle and all the rest of it. And then once that's done, they're there all year, you start pottering about all through the year, various marks all over the place, deep marks, shallow marks, they'll be all over. And then in the autumn, they get sort of ready, they, they up and they, they move offshore, and then we start seeing some absolutely monstrous ones and they start inhabiting every single wreck out there in the channel, they pretty much get on. Some wrecks fish better than others, uh, but some hold some absolutely monster black bream, and I'm certain that the black bream record will go at some point. They used to be a highly targeted commercial fish, they still are, but down here at Kingmere they used to do pair trawling, which is where two boats will tow one net, and having done it for my sins when I was a commercial fisherman, they take a hell of a lot of black bream and bass, that's now been banned, and what we're seeing is from reports from fishermen, anglers, and divers, is that bream numbers are now just exploding and they're recovering really, really quickly. I strongly believe that we're going to see a boat record black bream at some point in the next few years as a result. On records, then, the current shore record is a six pound eight fish. Uh, cracking black bream from the shore, that one. And the boat record is just slightly bigger at £6.14. Um, like I said, I, I do think that will go at some point, the boat record, purely because the numbers they're getting there, there's not as many bigger ones being taken from the ecosystem. So I do think they, they, they pack on weight pretty quickly from what I've seen. And I think it's only a matter of time before we see that record fall. That's on the bottom now. So all I'm doing is letting that waft down there now. I'll let it pull tight in itself with a tide. And then as soon as it hits the bottom, there you go, there's a bite. I'm just reeling down slightly. 
and then you got to stick it. Big strike, and there you go. And there's another bream. And that was, you saw that, you watched it go all the way down and start to finish. And you've got to stick those bream. Get that hook set. And look at that, that's running nice. That's, that's running, that is. And that's going to be another nice bream. So coming on to rigs and tactics, absolutely no need to fish heavy with these. No need whatsoever. They are a really, really hard fighting fish, but to get the most out of it, fish light. I fish a 20, 60 gram spinning rod and 200 foot of water, and that's with a two ounce lead. That's what I use when I'm out there. Pick your tides. Obviously, if the tide picks up, scale your weight up a little bit, but there's no need to be using big heavy gear for these. You'll just lose all the enjoyment out of it. So a nice light spinning setup, sort of 20, 30 pound braid. You can go as light as you like. I'm gonna try and get one on the, on the uh, LRF gear this year. So a little six gram rod. I'm gonna try and have some real fun with it when they come in. Uh, so I'll be sure to keep an eye out for that one when I post that up, because that'll be a brilliant video. And I'm also gonna try and get them on the lure this year as well, which I know is possible, because I've seen it done already by Robin Howard at Brighton. So that's another thing to try and do, is get one on the lure, little slow pitch jig. But yeah, nice light gear, um, and that's the best way to get the enjoyment out of these fish. Rigs. Now, whenever I talk about rigs, I always say there's more than one way to skin a cat, and that's still 100% true here. But I am very, very passionate about the rig that I use to catch black bream uh, because it, it works a treat. Uh, I've developed it a little bit to tweak it, to make it better, and it just, it just knocks it out of the park. I've got a video on it, uh, and it's called a killer black bream rig because it, it is it is absolutely deadly for these fish, and I'll tag it into the description. But essentially, it is a two up and one down rig uh, with some floating beads on each length of line. And what the floating beads do is they just waft the bait, they hang that bait mid-water. So rather than having your line dropping down, running flush with your main body or your rig, the floating beads just keep it and it, it, it helps it flutter away from the rig. And it's absolutely brilliant. And the one at the bottom picks up a few bonus fish occasionally as well, your gurnards and your place. is absolutely deadly for black bream. So I will put a video of it if I can, if I can find it, and I'll do that now. Uh, like I said, two up, one down, but I'll just show you it so you, you know we're singing off the same song sheet. Um, obviously, swivel goes to your, your clip leader on you know, your, your rod. And then I've got two dropper loops, which I then just snip and then make the make the snoods. A couple of beads. That's a, that's a one o crab hook. Um, anything sharp will do you. Yeah? Anything sort of that. Or little circle looks will do. And then I've got my little, uh, tie the swivel to the end of that. And then between the last hook and that, I've got my little clip there. That's where my lead sits. And then obviously you've got your long make this bottom one longer um so obviously because those two will be stood up in the water and sometimes the bream are a lot higher up so they'll pick up the higher ones and if not then this one here at the bottom just floats but up. other than that you want to be using a nice sharp hook so i use a size four cox and rule crab hook or if i can't get hold of those or for whatever reason i haven't got any with me i like a nice one o circle hook something razor sharp is what you're after um, because these bream, they come in, they hit you, and then they're gone. If you don't, if they don't self-hook themselves, then you've got to strike hard, and you do have to strike hard with these fish. Don't be scared to strike. As soon as you see that bite, really whack into it, uh, because otherwise you just won't set the hook, because their mouths are full of teeth, and they are rock hard. Baits. My favourite bait for bream is cuttle, little tiny cuttle strips. I prefer that over squid, which would be my second favourite, because the cuttlefish is tougher purely for the fact that when it's fast and furious, you want to be down amongst them bream. As soon as you've brought your fish up, put it back or put it in your bucket, whatever you're doing with it, you want to be back down there and straight back into them. If your bait's been shredded or ripped apart, you're going to lose a couple of minutes baiting up again. So that's why I like cuttlefish. Half the time it's still there when you come up. Bream aren't fussy about presentation. Just hook it once through your, bre your, your strip of your bait and send it down. Cuttlefish, it stays on there. You can literally send it straight back down and be straight back into your fish. So if you haven't got any squid or cuttle available, an inshore bait that works really, really well on the inshore reefs or from the shore is a uh, ragworm. Ragworm is a bit of a touchy bait for some people. Some people love it, some people hate it. For me, I think it has its place and black bream fishing is one of them. Little bunches of head hook rag sent down into a bream mark absolutely killer on its day really really good uh going back to rigs baited feathers is another easy way of doing it if you don't want to tie your own rigs or you discover some black bream by accident one day and you haven't got bream rigs with you 
set of baited feathers will do the job or a simple two up, just two up above your weight, send it down, works a treat from the shore and the boat alike. Quick fact for you before we come on to top tips is something I didn't know until recently is all black bream are born gender neutral. So when they're first born, they don't have a male or a female chromosome, they're born neutral. And then something in the water changes, I don't know if it's the temperature or whether the bream themselves have something in them that spontaneously reacts to something, I don't know. But then what happens is they either turn into a male or they turn into a female. So yeah, all bream, they're born gender neutral. Just a fun fact for you because I thought it was interesting when I was told. Okay, coming on to top tips then, and number one. So, keeping fish. Normally when someone's keeping fish for the table, the females go back and a male is kept for the table. That's generally how it works, the stocks, and that's normally the given thing that people are used to. However, black bream are slightly different in that both male and female are equally important to each other in terms of breeding. And I touched on it slightly earlier, but the reason is, yes, a female will be carrying the eggs and she was the one that is gonna lay the eggs. However, one male can guard up to a dozen nests and he's responsible for a dozen females' nests. So if you keep the male, essentially what you then do is you leave a dozen females unguarded to predators. So you raise, um, your bass, all the rest of it. Um, so those eggs then become unprotected. And if they're getting smashed by predators, then they're not gonna get a chance to breed anyway, whether they lay their eggs or not. So when you're keeping a bream and you're deciding what to take, it's a bit of a dilemma. Personally, I take the males and I still put the females back. That's what I do personally, because I tend to find the males are a better eating size than the females. However, if you keep a female, then there's also no harm in that as well. So don't feel like if you're getting a run of females or you do pull a nice female out, that actually you're doing it a, a, a disservice by putting it back or keeping it, sorry, because both are just as important to each other in the bream ecosystem world. Top tip number two, and it's a boat fishing uh, tip for black bream. You can be on bream or you can be off them by as little as 10, 15, 20 feet in the spring. When they're breeding, their nest sites can be so densely populated, when you're on them, you are on them. And a lot of the time when they're breeding, they're not actually attacking your baits because they're hungry, they're attacking it for a predatory instinct and they wanna get you out of the way, a bit like Ballon Rass. But if you're on them, you are on them. But if you suddenly get a bit of wind, or you trim your engine over and you move the boat position using your anchor, uh, sorry, using the engine, and you drift off of the position, you can go from having a bite a drop to nothing. So. When you're at anchor on a reef, and this is especially true down Kingmere, if bites are a little bit slack, don't be tempted to quickly haul the anchor up and then re keep re-anchoring. Just trim your engine over all the way to the port, have another fish for 10, 15 minutes. If nothing, go all the way over to the starboard and then go back the other way and have a fish for 10, 15 minutes because you can find that you will move through different patches of fish. Let a little bit of line off, put a little bit of line in, as in the anchor line, because they can be so populated in one area, they're just slightly off of them and they're guarding their nest, they won't come out and get you. In the autumn time for the bigger bream, it's not so much of a problem because they're moving about and they're not focused on their nests. They're generally hanging over the wrecks or reefs and they're swimming about. So autumn time, that's not a problem. But certainly in the spring, just move your position slightly if you're not getting bites and try and pick some up that way because you might find you drop into some. Top tip number three for black bream, don't be scared to twitch your bait. If you sat there for a while and you're not getting any bites, pick your rod up, give it a little six inch flick or two with your rod, put it back in the holder and that can induce a bite almost straight away. It basically, if the, if the, if the bait's not moving, it hasn't caught their eye or perhaps they're just sitting there lingering around, that little twitch can trigger that predatory instinct and bang and then you'll get a bite almost instantly. Put it to the test numerous times last year, works an absolute treat. If you're suddenly getting loads of bites and it goes a bit quiet, little flick, that bait flutters again, starts fluttering, lifts up in the water, bomb there on it like piranhas. And fourth and final tip then for black bream, and I've got a video on this one and I'll tag it in the description, is black bream chum. Works an absolute treat in shallow or deeper water. I've got a mixture that I use, it's used tuna flakes and halibut pellets and uh, a lot of oil. Mix it all together 
and I stick that in a cage feeder or inside some Carpers PVA bags. Um, I send that down on my hook. It dissolves all around your hook bait, gets a scent in the water, gets them going absolutely crazy. Works an absolute treat. People use boiled rice as well. Chuck it up tight of your anchor point, send it down in PVA bags or a big feeder or some sort of chum thing that people use, these contraptions. 101 ways of doing it. I know it's a freshwater thing, ground baiting, but it does work for sea fishing as well. And it especially works for black bream and it brings in other species as well. So don't be scared to give it a go, especially in shallower water where it doesn't have to do, you don't have to have much skill in trying to aim it to get it down to where your baits are. Shallow water reefs, 40, 50 foot deep. You can literally drop it up tight of your anchor when you're putting your anchor down. And by the time you settle back, it's gonna hit the bottom and start trundling down through, bring all those fish into you. Absolutely brilliant top tip, that one. And I highly recommend you give it a go this year if you haven't already. Well, that's been the Black Bream for Fish Fridays. I hope you enjoyed it. The season is about to start here in Sussex now, any time now, next two, two sort of three weeks. So good luck to you, those that are getting out and those I speak to on a regular basis about Black Bream. I know there's a lot of you this year looking to get some big ones. Thanks for watching. Please do like and subscribe and I'll see you all again soon.